Satellite images have been released showing the attack on the 23rd arsenal of Russia's main missile and artillery directorate near Oktyabrsky settlement in Russia's Tver region on the night of September 21. The images have been circulated in Ukrainian telegram channels. The highest level satellite images have also been circulated of the aftermath of a drone attack on an ammunition depot near Tykoretsk in Russia's southern Krasnodar region. The depot was one of the key arsenals in the logistics system of Russian troops. At the moment of the attack, there was an echelon delivering more than 2,000 tons of ammunition, including from the North Korea. The released images show that wagons with ammunition were being unloaded at all affected ammunition warehouses during the strike. Fire and explosion had taken place in the areas of both military arsenals following the attack. The third Russian ammunition depot was struck in Russia's Kaluga region that stored artillery and missile weapons for the Iskander Operational Tactical Missile Systems and the Tochkayu Tactical Missile Systems. Furthermore, Ukrainian drones hit the Shaikovka airfield, where Tu-22M strategic aviation aircraft are stationed. Overall, Ukraine destroyed thousands of Russian ammunition during strikes on three Russian regions last week. The attacks were carried out by the State Security Service of Ukraine. Russia has threatened a missile strike on Strasbourg if Ukraine is allowed to fire Western weapons at Russian territory. This was stated by the State Duma Speaker Vyacheslav Volodin, commenting on the news that the European Parliament called for lifting restrictions on Ukraine's strikes on Russian territory. If this happens, Russia will give a tough response using more powerful weapons. No one should have any illusions about this. The State Duma insists on this, Volodin said. Moreover, the Russian politician asked two public questions to the MEPs. He wondered whether they had consulted voters before voting on this decision and whether Europeans wanted war to come to their home. Before making such a decision, we should have remembered the lessons of World War II. Then, 27 million Soviet citizens died in the fight against fascism. It was our country that liberated you and all of Europe. The only thing the European Parliament should do after such a statement is to dissolve itself. For reference, the Sarmat missile's flight time to Strasbourg is 3 minutes and 20 seconds, Volodin added. Recall the European Parliament has called on EU member states to lift existing restrictions that prevent Ukraine from using Western weapons systems to destroy legitimate military targets in Russia. According to the EP website, the corresponding resolution was supported by 425 European deputies, 63 abstained and 131 were against. The text of the resolution states that without lifting the current restrictions, Ukraine cannot fully exercise its right to self-defense and remains vulnerable to attacks on its civilian population and infrastructure. The European Parliament stressed that insufficient supplies of ammunition and restrictions on their use create a risk that previous efforts will be nullified. MEPs also expressed regret over the reduction in bilateral military aid to Ukraine from EU countries. MEPs reiterated their call on EU member states to fulfill their commitments made in March 2023 to provide Ukraine with 1 million shells and to speed up the supply of weapons and air defense systems, including German Taurus missiles. In addition, the EP reiterated its position that all EU countries and NATO allies must collectively and individually commit to annually allocating at least 0.25% of their GDP for military support to Ukraine. Stepan Bana, commander with the Bani unit, says that Russia is attacking mainly with infantry, but there was an attempt to break through by a group of 30 soldiers on 15 motorcycles. Russia is trying to carry out assault actions of various kinds every day in the Siversk sector as well as in other sectors. Most of the attacks involve enemy infantry. Two days ago, the Russians even attempted to conduct an assault on motorcycles. 
There was a group of about 15 motorcycles, each with two invaders, who intended to break through deep into the territory controlled by the Ukrainian Defense Forces. However, the entire group was destroyed and the enemy's offensive was stopped, said the commander of the Barney unit on Espresso TV. According to him, the 10th Brigade has been in the Siversk sector for two years now and the brigade took up its positions in September 2022. I would like to say that our battalion's area of responsibility is mainly field terrain. Therefore, if we talk about successes, they boil down to the fact that we have lost a landing or a field or have regained it. Obviously, we are targeting certain settlements, but the key task is to stay in our area of responsibility, emphasized Stepan Bana. The motorcycle is already almost standard equipment in the Russian army. The Ukraine war has evolved into a conflict in which any movement is determined by the massive presence of frontline explosive and surveillance drones. More and more, small vehicles are coming into action to the detriment of the slower, more identifiable armored infantry carriers. Ukrainian military analysts and those of its Western allies have noted the leap forward that has taken place with these vehicles since last April in the Russian army. Videos broadcast by Russian media and online military accounts show a large fleet of motorcycles at regimental bases such as the 123rd Motorized Rifle Brigade in Donetsk or the 71st Motorized Rifle Regiment on the Zaporizhia front. In the latter case, images released by its personnel show motorcycles on which metal cages have been installed to protect the crew members from drone attacks. Russian soldiers have recommended in recent months, via their Telegram accounts, that electric motorcycles be used because they are silent and are harder for drones with thermal night vision to detect.